I'm not the first person to say this, but when it comes to gender and sexuality, there needs to be more representation in video games. I don't know about you, but playing a game with a full cast of straight, cisgendered characters is starting to get a bit repetitive. A lot of writers try to incorporate some LGBTQ plus characters, but often go wrong by basing them off obnoxious stereotypes. And that's how we get this. Oh, here we are in beautiful Lona Lulu. Like, sometimes they focus on sexuality so much that they actually forget to add any character to their characters. So, terrible examples aside, for this Pride Month, I want to take a minute to appreciate Ellie from The Last of Us, who I feel stands as one of the rare examples of a great portrayal of a member of the LGBTQ community in video games. What I love about Ellie is how her sexuality is completely separated from her character's personality. She's not a gay character, she's a character who happens to be gay. At the start of the game, Ellie comes off as this feisty, stubborn teenager, which is strange because as seen with Bill, she makes a wonderful first impression. And then the game just drops her on you, and both you and protagonist Joel have to begrudgingly play the role of babysitter. But as you slowly get to know her, you see that there's so much to like about her character. Because at the end of the day, Ellie's just a kid. Underneath that rough exterior, there's an adorable little girl who geeks out in comic books and terrible puns, and you get to watch in pure and utter wonder as she explores the outside world for the first time. Just like Joel, the player grows really close to Ellie, and before you're even halfway through the game, you're like this. I've only had Arlo for a day and a half, but if anything happened to him, I would kill everyone in this room and then myself. Very violent eulogy, I like it. Now, Ellie's sexuality was only revealed in a DLC that came out nine months after the base game. And a lot of people interpreted the late reveal of Ellie's sexuality as a kind of pandering, like it was an afterthought for the writers who just wanted to come off as progressive. But I see it differently. For me, Ellie's sexuality not being revealed in the main game makes sense because ultimately it's irrelevant to the story. Joel didn't need to announce his sexual preferences, so why would Ellie? I get that it's important for her, but by revealing her sexuality post-game, it gave the players a chance to form an opinion about Ellie based off of her actions and choices throughout the story, and that's how it should be. And besides, I think there was a bit much going on for her to be dropping hints about what team she plays for. And just so we're clear about back there, it was either him or me. I'm gay. I get that a lot of writers incorporate gay characters or say that a pre-existing character is gay to try and use their sexuality as a selling point. But Ellie's character was so awesome and The Last of Us was such a well-received game that I felt the writers really didn't need to do this. So for me, when Ellie's sexuality is revealed, it felt real, like it wasn't something they thought of at the last minute. I also feel that the actual reveal of her sexuality deserves praise in its own right. The Left Behind DLC isn't just another coming out story, because God knows we don't have enough of those. It's an actual love story, and there is undeniable chemistry between Ellie and her first love, Riley, thanks to fantastic acting from Ashley Johnson and Yanni King. The love story that plays out over its runtime could just as easily be done with two straight characters, and I don't think that you can say that about many depictions of non-heterosexual romances. At the end of the day, no matter what your sexuality or gender, love is love, and this DLC shows that. So everyone, thank you for your time, and happy Pride Month. Take a moment to appreciate what makes you, you, and never let anybody make you feel different just because you're not what they want you to be.